Eve. Yes. 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 Oh my goodness. Well, I'm so happy to be here. I am new to this comedy world. And I have to tell you, it's all my husband's fault. <laughs> um, it, I blame him for actually everything, so this works out really well. But what I um, do, because I'm so new, is I like to test my material with smaller groups before I come to you guys. So recently, my husband, he set up a small group of ladies, and I was testing my material, and I couldn't read the room. They were just... Either they really thought I sucked, or they were really amused. And I found out right after, this group recently went to a Botox party. <laughs> so they were frozen in expression. <laughs> and it, made me remi it reminded me of my back alley Botox experience that I personally had. <laughs> it was horrible. So during the pandemic, this is what prompted me to try Botox, is that, you know, who was dealing with all those Zoom meetings, right? All those, where you're literally staring at yourself for an hour. And I was looking at the deep wrinkles forming, like the Grand Canyon on my face. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this Botox thing. But I'm, I'm, you know, I couldn't go on next door and be like, who has cheap Botox? That's like, not going to get approved in my, you know, off-label. I don't care, I just need to do something. I need to shoot up my face fast. So my friend said, hey, my friend does Botox in her bathroom. I was like, let me try it, which is funny because I'm a germ phobe, you guys. Like, I hand sanitize a thousand times a day, and I was preparing for this pandemic my entire life. In fact, I had so many Clorox wipes already, I could supply a small hospital. So for me to do this, and I did it, because it was the right price, um, I sat down and the, and the, and the, the bathroom Botox lady said, how many ounces do you want? And I was like, don't you measure it by units? <laughs> but whatever, ounces, gallons, units, just shoot me up. So anyways, next week, following week after Botox, I'm trying to drink my coffee and it's dribbling. It's like coming down. And the guy across from me says, do you, are you having a stroke? I said, nope, just completely overshot my face. Anyway, lesson learned. Let's talk turkey. Who is responsible for the turkey tomorrow? Woo! If you have not defrosted your turkey by right now, you have ruined Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I was talking to a friend, somebody in this room, who I promised I wouldn't embarrass too much, um, was preparing her turkey before she came to the show, and she said, Jen, my wedding ring got caught up the turkey. <laughs> like, literally, it was so frozen, her ring is in the turkey right now. <laughs> And I said, wow, that's gonna be like a chew for caution message for your, your friends tomorrow. Or they could look at it like they got a big Cracker Jacks prize. Or someone's gonna think they're getting engaged tomorrow. <laughs> so anyways, tis the season, happy holidays. I am a Jewish mama. So it is a very confusing, I know, is there a couple people who celebrate Hanukkah in here? There's like a few of us left. But, but my kids, oh my poor kids, it's like, it's just a confusing time because we don't light up during the holiday season. Our house and trees, you know, and so I have to explain to my son, you know, sorry, good old St. Nick is not going to stop at our house. And he gets really upset. And I'm like, it's like, we're like one of those mean people, in, you know, during Halloween that turn the lights off. <laughs> we just go dark. But we have a comprehensive holiday. Eight days, remember? So he brought home a countdown calendar for Santa from school, and I had to remind him, remember we're Jewish? Santa doesn't come to our house, but we do have a similar version of Elf on the Shelf. Who does that? Where it's like, you know, that mischief elf that like disrupts your house? Well, we have, we have Mench on the Bench. <laughs> Versus lots of guilt. <laughs> this is guilt because that's what we do best. Jewish guilt. I mean, I tomorrow for Thanksgiving, listen, if I don't eat all my food at my mom's house, I'm going to be questioned for hours. You don't like my food? Oh, yeah. Right? What, you, do, you don't want to be here? 
Does your husband ever feed you? <laughs> so I have been fasting for three days. This is my third day right now in preparation for tomorrow's Thanksgiving meal. I'm going to be so hungry that I'm going to eat one of her dish towels, but not the decorative towel. <laughs> There's a difference. So I unfortunately inherited this guilt and started to, you know, my, my poor kids are now experiencing it, right? To my husband over there. My son got a 90% the other day. I'm like, what? You got just a 90%? Why didn't you get 100? So I'm like, oh! So anyways, but guilt, if it's not guilt, we're apologizing, right? We're either guilty or we're apologizing for something. So my daughter often is apologizing and saying, I'm sorry, we're Jewish. And it all started, it all started when I was taking a bike ride with my children and my bike seat fell off. Like, how embarrassing is that? And by the way, as a female, that was a terrible injury. <laughs> so my bike seat fell off, and it fell off because my husband tried to adjust the, you know, the height, and he screwed it up. Because he <laughs> doesn't know how to fix anything. He's not a tool guy. And that's okay. I, I didn't marry him for that, that special strength. He actually, sadly, he sadly breaks things more when he tries to attempt to fix something. <laughs> and I know this. I'll tell you what. You probably wonder, why do I know that he breaks things all the time? It says, I'll get a credit card fraud alert when he's gone to Home Depot for the 20th time in one day. Apparently, you cannot go to the same store 20 times because the credit card will shut down. So that is why I know something catastrophic is happening at my house when I get the fraud alert from Home Depot. So I said to my son, listen, and this happened, this, this terrible, embarrassing situation happened in front of a church service at our pocket park. And they and they, they said, we'll help you put the seat back on, don't worry. I told my son, just go home and ask your dad for the one tool he has, which is a wrench. One tool. And he said, I'm gonna ask dad for the wench, his wench? I'm like, please, in front of the church. I'm like, please don't ask for his wench. By the way, that is not the right word. We always mess up our words. I ordered fried orca last week. I don't blame him. Apple doesn't fall far. So he's running, he's going to get the, you know, the, the one tool. The church folks fixed my bike. I was so thankful. And they said, thank the Lord. Just thank the Lord for help, you know. And I'm like, so I'm like, thank you, you know, thank you, know, thank you. And my son said, your name's the Lord? Oh my God, thank you. And that's the coolest name I've ever heard. And my daughter says, I'm sorry, we're Jewish. <laughs> so this continues on. My son's on the church soccer team because he's not athletic and the church accepts all. <laughs> so I'm like, listen, just we're going to participate in the church soccer team. They pray at the end. You can certainly join the prayer, but please don't ever lead it. Don't volunteer to lead it because we don't know how to pray. I don't know. Is it dear God? Is it almighty? Is it all righty? I, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like it should be all righty, God, like a surfer of church. But anyway, so he... <laughs> volunteers. He's like, I gotta do it. And I'm like, oh God, because everyone's like praying for food and peace and family and health. And my son prays that the soccer ball does not hit him in the weenus next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's not called the weenus. And thank you for that prayer. We're done with the church. And then lastly, around this time, if you have kids, they always shop in that holiday store at the school to buy you a bunch of crap you don't need. But it's very thoughtful. And my son says, I bought you the prettiest earrings, mom. They were so pretty. I just want you to, I can't wait for you to wear them. And so show me what, what, what earrings are, are these beautiful earrings. He bought me Christmas ornaments. <laughs> yeah, he bought me Christmas ornaments thinking they were earrings. And my daughter's like, I'm sorry, we're Jewish. <laughs> so who, we always travel during the holidays because we're free agents. <laughs> so the last Christmas, we tried an Airbnb. Has anyone done the Airbnb? It's so hard to see out there. Airbnb. We didn't know when I rented our very first Airbnb that it came with the owner. <laughs> I'm sure as I did. All my stories, by the way, are 100% true. Um, we got there, and Cynthia, the owner, was in the main house. We were in her guest house, and she thought she could join us for everything. <laughs> she joined us for our first dinner. <laughs> she joined us in the jacuzzi. <laughs> and she was in our family pictures. <laughs> so, I was really nervous about doing an Airbnb again. We did a few months ago. My husband turned 50. We thought we'd go to the wine country and get really drunk so we'd black it out and not remember it. And when we got there, we traveled with other couples. And these couples were much more high maintenance than we were. 
we have very low standards. That's the problem. And they all wanted like a king size bed and they wanted a bathroom in their room and they wanted all these amenities. And I just, you know, I just wanted the bed, but here's what happened. When we got to the chateau that was advertised on the Airbnb, beautiful pictures, we got the detached garage <laughs> with bunk beds. <laughs> over the bottom because listen it's a liability at 50 getting on the top bunk, right i mean either he was gonna like hurt himself getting up there or need to take a nap on the way i was like so worried about that and then the chateau got to you know, they had to lock the door we didn't have a lock on the detached garage in our bank beds we had a bug infestation the owner came by and i was like so upset he gave me a can of rain and a dust buster i don't know like that can maybe protect us when like the hitchhiker from the interstate comes in because our door didn't lock <laughs> so i would have to like get down in the middle of the night from the bunk bed in the dark get a phone flashlight get a key to go in the chateau to go to the bathroom so this airbnb business is not it, it's just not working for us but we did we we tried it so the other thing we we love and you know what where do you guys think the adults have their biggest meltdown right now? If you had to guess, like this is the time where we see lots of tantrums. <laughs> what what couple activities? I mean, Black Friday is coming up, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is like shopping, right? Which is like, to me, it's like a mosh pit at the Pearl Jam concert. <laughs> I, I just want to avoid it. Um, but air travel, who travels right now? It's crazy, it's chaotic to travel. And I hate, I'm a very, very nervous flyer, right? And I um, was just going to the TSA line, so I just read a story, you can't like, bring your jams or Thanksgiving food through TSA. I got our, um, we got our peanut butter, coconut peanut butter from Hawaii confiscated because it was considered a liquid. And I was thinking, that's crazy because I was thinking the brown package that's coming after me that looks like there's cocaine in it, <laughs> that doesn't get stopped, the cocaine, but the, but the peanut butter got taken away. So I just, I hate flying, I'm a, again, I just, I freak out. I, my husband and I don't sit next to each other on the plane. And the reason, he, he likes the aisle, and I like the windows, I like to be the wing monitor, make sure flaps and things are like, okay. so I can alert the pilot if something's going wrong, you know, like, oh, sorry, your flaps aren't properly, you know, deployed. I'm such a freak. So the middle passenger, she or he, really, I feel bad for, because sometimes I just don't acknowledge my husband's existence. Like, I pretend we don't know each other, because that's weird. But sometimes I'm like, hungry for a snack, and he has a snack bag, and I'll, I'll say, hey, can I, can I have a snack, or I need the battery charger, right? And the middle passenger says, do you two know each other? And I was like, oh yeah, he's my husband. And she's like, do you want to sit next to him? And I was like, no, he has bad gas. <laughs> Which is funny, speaking of gas, like when we had to wear, remember we, had a, we were required and mandated to wear masks on the plane? That was the worst time for people gassing it up on the plane. I was just telling my husband, it smelled always so bad because I think people thought we were wearing gas masks. <laughs> and so now I'm like, thank God we got back to that, you know, behavior. So anyways, um, this is definitely, tis a season of like wanting to be lost and not found. And, and we have location services in my family. Do you guys track your kids? Yeah. Yes. I really meant to get that to track the kids. I meant to, you know, the intent was to track the kids, the app, but they actually track us. They track us because I will get a text from my daughter saying, hey, you're 1.4 miles from Duck Bros. Here's my order. I was like, oh my gosh, no, that is not the intent of that. Find my friends. But the best was recently, my husband was at lunch. He works from home, and remote workers are like under house arrest. He never goes anywhere, and if he does, he's either with me or with our children. And he said, um, or my daughter said, hey, dad is out at lunch. And that's weird because he's not with me, he's not with you. And I'm like, that is weird. Who can he be with? Like, no, he's getting concerned. Like, so I said, I called my husband, I said, who are you with? And then I, I see, find my friends, I see your location at a restaurant. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm with Cynthia from the Airbnb last year. <laughs> She's back, She's back. But the best location services is really for my parents because the other day my dad said, hey, can, you know, we need to go to the mall, we're gonna, we're gonna meet up with you at Radio Shack, which I'm like, I think Radio Shack is long gone. <laughs> How about J.C. Penny? I think you're the only one keeping J.C. Penny alive. And he said, okay, I said, I'm gonna drop a pin, because this is ridiculous, I have to wait for you at J.C. Penny. <laughs> Nobody should go there. Anyways, I shouldn't say that. But um, I said, hey, I'm gonna drop you a pin, and then you will find me, we will find each other. And I did, and then five minutes later, he says, Jen, 
why did you send me a picture of a lollipop? <laughs> Anyways, I am Jen Stein. Thank you so much. Happy